Welcome into the Real Kipper and Born Show and happy American Thanksgiving wherever you are, wherever you What was that? That was a turkey. Do it one more time. Not bad. Thank you. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> wherever you find us on Sportsnet 590, Sportsnet 360, and Sportsnet Plus, 4 to 6 p.m. Hope you're enjoying your holiday, whether you're south of the border or right here in Canada. We're still working. Although yeah, we are. <laughs> never know it with no NHL games tonight. I'm Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, the cobbler. <laughs> the gobbler, gobbler. Not the the gobbler. Gobbler. I'm not a shoe repair guy I got a couple yeah the, the soles of my shoes aren't <laughs> gobbler well. cobbler yeah there you go Sammy McKee Derek Brandeo and Frank the Tank Baraska Alaska I gotta give his family yeah. some yeah. love there you go right Shout out yeah. to the Baraska club. we're all together for the next hour where the Toronto Maple Leafs we're on the ice today before heading to Chicago to take on the Blackhawks 2 p.m. Eastern, I think, tomorrow, yeah. mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. 1 p.m. their time, right? They're, are they one behind there? They're one behind there. Sounds right. Yep. And, yeah, we're going to have the game. We're going to be up after the game. After the game. We'll yes. be up after the game. But earlier today, the Toronto Maple Leafs made it official when they placed defenseman John Klingberg on long-term injury reserve. Uh-huh. Uh, LB, no real surprise here. No real surprise, but... At least it's a movement on something we've been kind of speculating about, waiting for it to happen. I don't know that we've heard anything from the team that makes you think it's done for the season yet, which to me, LTIR doesn't mean anything until you reach that done for the season point. Well, I think we can all speculate, and depending on what side you are, if you're a John Klingberg fan or not, Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not you're you're hoping or wishing that – I don't know, he disappears, his salary disappears, it goes to Robita Island, and you're able to replace the $4.1 million. Yeah. Or to just sit here and say he's better than what the Leafs had witnessed, he's better than what the fans have witnessed, and if this was the issue and they can fix the issue, would you welcome back a, a healthier one in the new year? I think that's a really good question. Like, let's say... And Sammy, you had speculated on this before the show. Like, maybe we should cut him some slack performance wise. So, the the other side of that, though, is are we going to cut him slack for the all of last season, too? Is that was what was getting him last year as well? Like, he wasn't very good. And we were all talking about how he earned himself a $4 million contract this year, which in retrospect seems pretty crazy. Yeah. But, like, I can't help but wonder. I mean, he was really bad. Yeah. And you, and we all killed him and we all. You know, it was a leading conversation to every single story we had. And it's like, yeah, maybe he was just really hurt. But, you know, now thinking about that, like, it's so hard to add a player out there, right? And to add someone is going to cost you assets. Are you better off, like, with Hank Klingberg getting this sorted out, coming back and being a valuable player? Now, the counter to that, I think, would be that he's not really the type of guy the Leafs need, in your opinion, in my opinion, and I think in Sam's opinion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, where we sit on it probably is that maybe they'd be better off adding someone different. But, hey, a healthy Klingberg would be better than spending a lot to get someone who's not much better than he would have been anyway. So the game plan right now, I think, for Klingberg, and we we heard from Sheldon Keefe uh, in the last few days, or today, was he? Yeah. Did we we get him today? We did, and I I took the clip out of there because he was just saying that there was no update and we're going to figure out and then we got an update i think uh what i got out of the clip today that you took out Mm -hmm. is that he's got some decisions to make this is now on john klingberg it's we'll work with you but this is really about what you want to do moving forward Mm -hmm. because he does hold all the cards here he really does when it comes to uh that was my ringer okay that was my ringer just kipper has his no, your phone makes a hundred different sounds. Yeah, like, there's no there's like a, event that is the same. There's like a Scarface thing. There's a <laughs> look at two phone Shakur over here too. I didn't even know this is a new addition. Oh my god. Yeah, I know it, <laughs> it is uh, Al Pacino, <laughs> and I I keep forgetting whether or not he cusses on it, and it's. A nightmare if it And goes what was on the air. one the other day? Is it Don't Stop Believing? Yeah, or is right. Don't Stop Me Now is what it was. Don't Qu- Stop Me Now. What is that? That's what that's your ringtone. Don't no. Stop Me Now. 
No. Yeah, was that song, was no it just, music. Or was it just playing on no your No music. <laughs> then that's what it was. It, it was, was probably jamming out to Queen. I I, it, it's a great song. <laughs> it's such a good song. Uh, and where were we? I, I, don't know. I forget. This isn't Clean off the break. rails Friday, is it? Yeah, it feels like it. Well, tomorrow's a weird day anyway. So who's the bad guy here? Is that what yeah. we're getting at? Scarface reference? No? Okay. Tough one. Tough crowd. <laughs> no, no one. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. I was I'll give you the call. Kid. I'll take my chances. You can call okay. it at the end of okay. the show. Okay. 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 This is on Klingberg now to figure out what course of action he wants. Of course, the Leafs are going to support him, mm -hmm. but this is now about Klingberg figuring out what's going on with his hip. They gave you time and you tried a few different things to settle it down. It didn't settle down. Mm -hmm. Now it's about, do you try moving forward to manage it or do you have surgery? That's the two choices that he has moving forward here. So he's going to consult. He's going to go probably see some experts and that'll probably be another seven or 10 days. So don't expect anything other than the Leafs buying themselves time by putting them on an LTIR to, to move forward. But Let's be honest. Like, you, you, you'd rather, if you're the Leafs, you don't want to take the chance on him maybe coming back and being the same player. You want to eventually think about replacing his yeah. $4 million. That in a That is the best case scenario for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Dare it, I say it. You no, know, that's the truth. It's the best case scenario. And I think for Klingberg, okay, he could fight through it. They could do these, like, you know, hip... Whatever they do, they inject him or they, you know, whatever they could do for him to get him back playing. Maybe he feels like he has to validate or justify that he's not as bad as he's been. Maybe he wants to come back and show that. But if he wants to have a long-term playing career in the NHL, his best option is probably do surgery now and then, yeah, you know, take on. a league minimum deal somewhere next year and show people that he is the player. He's still useful. I think that's probably it. It's very like, similar to the Kane conversation. Yeah. With him, like, no. fighting to come back. Much different. Well, what? how is it different? Because Kane... One's way better. Wow. Yeah. And, but you know what I'm getting at here. Historically, great. Listen, of course. Uh, Pat Kane's going through it right now. One of the best players in the history of the game. Mm -hmm. And he's having a tough time getting a, a deal. What? Let me rephrase that. He's having a tough time getting a deal he thinks is satisfactory to his okay. position. How's that? It's good. Do you think he wants term, yes. or money, yes, and a place he wants to be? You, all of the above. He wants three times five in well, Florida. I, I'm not even going to get into the money. I'm not even going to get into the Nick term. Kiprio but says. you know what it isn't? It isn't um, 750. Not doing 750. Big boys, I'm not here for the good of the sport. So uh, it's... There, there's some teams out there that would love to have him, and it's, come on, we're going to give you another chance to win a Stanley Cup. Yeah. That's better than. Give you two schmill and a chance at a cup. What's his career earnings been? Uh, 80? One bajillion. Well, right? he had an $80, $80 million contract. One of his deals. Okay, was so he's at 120, 130. Where does two, three, or four million dollars for two years matter to him? Estimate, uh, is he estimate, Nicholson? What's his burn rate? Estimated. Career earnings is a hundred and fifteen million dollars. That's got to be like top twenty. That's so all time. In That's saying it. that, there's a lot of contending teams would love to add them <laughs> mm -hmm. at whatever they feel is their bare minimum offer. Yeah. Anyways, I didn't Anyways. mean to derail the Klingberg thing, but it just yeah. feels the, like yeah. if you're pushing yourself. My, my point is though that uh, it Klingberg's going to have to go on a PTO. I don't even know if he can get seven fifty next year. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you're you're wrong necessarily. But if it's, he's got a brand new hip, the way he moves, the way he in the first game of the year this year, or after the first game, I called him uh, Kale McCarr 2.0 um, <laughs> with no regrets. He looked unbelievable. He no was regrets. dancing. I love it. He That's was. how he looked. He was unbelievable in game I one. The way he that. skates and moves, all the work the line and moved it on the power There's play. a reason why we're not scouts. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, it's a little tongue in cheek. But, you know, I can see him getting that PTO, turning that into real money. He should probably have the surgery. Now, my concern if you're the Leafs is it's real early in the year. With surgery, could he come back? I Four to six months takes you into the season. I think there's an if, – if it is, it's, say, we'll see in the first round where and it yeah. won't matter. You have to say to him, 
you're, if you're doing surgery, no, no, no. there's no coming back. No coming back. Yeah. Right? And we need, we need to, clarity. We need to move on the money yeah. sooner than later. So you have to commit. Does if you're committing to this, spe- we're committing to does, moving does, on. Does dropping them uh, it, in your salary cap structure in two weeks get you Zadorov a lot quicker? Certainly solves one of the, the major hurdles, doesn't it? Thought you would like Zadorov last night, eh? If Pospisil got slew foot a little bit. Zadorov went in there, stood up for him, punched a the guy's face. All his teammates went to the box and gave him the way to go. Yeah. Zaddy. That's uh, Zaddy, right? Zaddy. That's after getting your uh <laughs> Can I say that? That's that's after getting your your wrist slapped a little bit by your captain. Yeah, but they're all trying to say, way to go, pal. We're cool now. Still love it. Yeah. Still love it. Absolutely. And can you imagine that in Toronto? Right. They, uh, hey, a guy who will punch someone who, after something bad happens, sounds very appealing here in Toronto. Particularly punching downhill from six foot six. That's, that's we got nice. Mike Fuda coming up uh, in a few minutes. Former NHL executive, Sportsnet hockey analyst Darren Pang, also former NHL goalie, color analyst for NBC uh, Chicago and NHL on TNT, will join us. And then in the next hour, Luke Gazdick, because we are still just warming oh up. God on an Edmonton Oiler <laughs> conversation. This is a story that will not go away. I love away. that you wrote a whole Oilers article like, that was like, please. hey, at least the Leafs aren't the Oilers. <laughs> that was the whole article. It was 20 words. I'm just not sure <laughs> that went real well with the Edmonton Oiler fans. Ah, you're, you don't write it in the Edmonton Star. All right, do we got Mike Fuda? How are you, Kipper? We're good, buddy. How are you? I'm a little pissed, actually. I, got, I came out just flying out of the gates of my NFL pool. The Lions getting spanked by the uh, <laughs> supposedly, I don't know much about football, but I heard Green Bay wasn't supposed to be very good today. Jordan Love looked like he had uh, Brett Favre and uh, Aaron Rodgers shoved up his yin yang. So it was <laughs> is, is this one tough, tough start to my uh, football pool? Okay, so. but you're not, this isn't like an eliminated, you're not eliminated or anything. You're still in the running, aren't you? No, I just, it's like, it's like, uh, Certain NHL teams, I just didn't, sh- I didn't start on time. So, um, <laughs> are, are you equally disappointed? Because I, I think uh, when you did the your NHL fantasy picks, I think Klingberg was one of your top picks. So, oh yeah, Kipper, don't even get me going. Where, where are you Bring on back. the one miss? The one, the one thing that I didn't throw uh, rose petals at out of Brad Trelving's additions was uh, Klingberg, and and uh, now they're stuck with four million dollars in. Can't do anything with it. Well, so. uh, he is on. He he was put on a uh, long term IR today. Oh, he's on Robita Island. Yeah, um, and <laughs> you know, there's a sense that uh, there needs to be a process here for him to figure out uh, whether or not he wants to try to manage this the rest of the season or opt for surgery. And um, I think I know where Leaf fans might be leaning towards. <laughs> I think I think I'm with you on that one. I I just look at their defense, Kipper. It's funny. It's just since the beginning, it's 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 just doesn't fit together properly. And I mean, now you've got a chance, I guess, to to get at it. And I know everybody's talking about Zadorov. I personally think that Tanev, if you can only get one, I think Tanev's a much better fit. Um, I, I had a friend. I mean, I don't want to give him credit by saying his name, but and he's an Italian ball hockey star who calls it. He says. I love peanut butter sandwiches and I love tuna sandwiches, but I would never have a peanut butter and tuna sandwich. And when you look at this blue line, the teams that are winning, like the team, like Vancouver really addressed their back end, like lefty righty, got some guys out, better chemistry, brought in Susie Heronic. You see the teams like Carolina and, and Colorado and Vegas in particular, how they line up lefty righty. I just look at that and no matter how you write it down with the current crop, even when Klingberg was in there, who was a righty, um, who maybe should have been playing lefty the way he was playing. But I, <laughs> I just think, I just think that I think it's really important. They try and find a right shot D and uh, for me, the way they're back in, I don't think scoring is going to be a problem. If Tanev is available, that's somebody that I really focus on trying to get in. He's a warrior. I know he's banged up. He gets injured, but he gets injured because same way, Muzzin and Giordano and guys like that because they play like warriors every night. And I think that's exactly what they need in the back end. It just balances out a little better with the right and and what he brings compl- as a complete package. I think Zadorov's a big guy. Obviously, he punches guys in the mouth. As you said, he's got a bomb of the shot. He's an intimidating presence. But 
again, I think I think what Tanev and the and the shot factor being a lefty is is a lot is a huge factor in the in the addition that I'd want to make first. Feuds, they do have one right shot guy who's supposed to be coming in tomorrow. It's Connor Timmons time. Um, I, I remember having some conversations with you about him when they signed him and, and your thoughts on sort of his deal and where he's at. I just didn't like, I mean, obviously he's a Sault Ste. Marie guy who, who Dubas was really comfortable with and knew well. I just didn't see, um, I mean, honestly, I, I, I like his game better than I like, uh, than I like, <laughs> than I like the guy that's going on LTIR, but, or went mm. on LTIR. I still just don't think on a, on a Stanley cup team aspirations that Connor Timmons in the long term is the answer. And I didn't understand at the time that why he was signed at that time with cap space being such premium and to put somebody who couldn't be in your lineup in your top six in the playoffs signed to a two or three year deal at 1.3 or 1.25 million, whatever it is. I just didn't understand the timing of it. I do think he's a better fit. Um, then on the current with the current group, but I de- I definitely don't think he's the answer. He did lead them in scoring before he went down in training camp. Is is there a chance that they catch lightning in a bottle with this guy, or at the very least, he can come in and and be a healthier Klingberg? Well, he's a be- he's he's definitely an upgrade for Klingberg for me. Um, I still, you know, he's going to probably add uh, a right shot on the power play that's got a bomb and isn't is he's he's more accountable than Klingberg is so I think anything's an improvement from what he was bringing to the table but I also will say that I believe the Edmonton Oilers were undefeated in exhibition (laughs) and Jack Campbell had a 9.7 save percentage so it doesn't always translate good I hope it does for Connor he's he's been a good journeyman he's been battling injuries I mean even last year where he got in there and I thought he played fairly well for uh, you know, I believe he was a waiver pickup, or they traded him for a bit piece. So um, no, I hope he does well. I hope he, I hope he allows them to uh, carry on and be a part of that upper echelon group. And you know, it doesn't allow like everybody's talking about you know Boston kind of running away with it. But if you look at the games in hand, if Toronto were to win them, they'd be right up there with Boston and the top teams in the league. You know, they had a very successful trip to Europe, um, and they just got now. Now it's one of those where they've got a stretch of teams that they really should beat, that they just can't take the gas off the pedal and play down to their, like, like Chicago coming in and beating them uh, like they did in, at home. They've got, they've got to come in and kind of play with the same intensity uh, and get right back on the, on the, on the hopper here because they can't afford to go into a, go into the tank for any extended period of time, the way that everybody's starting to separate um, in the East. Fuse, we've been talking a lot this week, like everyone else, about Willie Nylander. Oh, my Lord, Willie Nylander. Uh, we, we have really exhausted that. But, you know, that line of his is going really well. And part of that is a guy that, you know, John Tavares, he, the captain of the team, who everyone was talking about his contract and, you know, is he going to be a big burden or a drag? But he kind of keeps scoring. Are you happy with how he's been playing? Are you surprised he's been able to maintain this level of performance, you know, this late in this contract? Well, I think he's never been a guy that fitness has ever been a problem. He's a very serious guy, as you can tell by his interviews. And, <laughs> yes. um, and, uh, and he's definitely not a soundbite guy, but he's, he's a, tr- he's a true pro. And, uh, I think a lot of that went into the thoughts when he was made the captain, because there obviously was a lot of, you know, thoughts to, you know, do we throw it on, do we throw it on Matthews at the time? And clearly he's a guy that his teammates really respect. And I mean, I don't think he's ever going to be a raw, raw guy, but he's a pro's pro. Um, he, you know, let's hope he can get, he just maintain his health. I mean, t- maintains his health. I mean, he got really banged up in the playoffs that one year with that uh, hit in the neutral zone. Uh, but as long as he stays healthy, he brings it every night. And uh, and again, the balance now um, with them moving knives up with the big boys and top line, it's just uh, the chemistry. Sometimes you just, you, you, you know, you, everybody had it written down that Bertuzzi was going to be such a great fit with Matthews and take bunting spot on the top line with, uh, and, and you know, it didn't work out with him and Marner. Um, not that it could never work out, but it's certainly, they were fighting to find any semblance of chemistry and then he bumps back a line and that line just hasn't missed a beat. And they've consistently been the best. I mean, I don't, I still think the number one line is the number one line, but with the way Nylander has played and the consistency, what he's played at and the carefree to not have any pressure, some guys fold up in a contract year and he's just putting it right to their, <laughs> he's putting it right to their treasurer because <laughs> that next contract is going to be well-earned. He's not backing into the double-digit uh, millions. He's uh, going 
full throttle and it's something to watch. So I think that's why it's so much more important for them to, you know, to find a little bit more chemistry on those, which they're, I mean, their fourth line starting to look a little bit better with the adjustments they've made there. And it's so important to add another defenseman on the back end down the stretch here. And, and the one thing tree did in Calgary and always seems to do is um, even at the end there, even what he did with the Leafs, I mean, obviously the Reefs thing doesn't look like it's working out quite well on the Klingberg one. I questioned from the get go, but to add Bertuzzi to the mix and add some of that grit and snot that he, that he's brought to the table, I think has been, it just speaks to the Brad finds a way to get things done. Problem is now it's like we talked about Edmonton. Like it's unbelievable to think the situation that they're in. And I can only imagine, I don't care whether you're Kenny Holland or, or a rookie general manager to have to pick up the phone to teams that are like 10 points ahead of you with no cap space. Um, you're, you're, <laughs> it, it's unbelievable. The Hilly has to climb to get something done uh, to improve that team. And I mean, I, I did hear that everything's on the table here. And I, I kind of thought that, even a guy like for me, when I watch them play and I watch them play all the time, you might have to take a player like, the, first of all, if you're going to try and get a trade done right now, you're going to have to move a piece that you don't want to move. I mean, I know Toronto all the time, every deal that they've done, you know, they included Klingberg again because clearly he wasn't fitting in. But there aren't total idiots on the other side of the table. They see how poorly he's playing as well. So yeah. it's not like they're going to welcome with open arms. And some of these teams... Like for me, like I looked at the beginning, like two goaltenders that I had kind of circled as these are, you can't just have another guess or a hope, right? It can't be like, we're going to take a shot at Dan Vladar or something and no knock on him. you got to be, or, or, you know, maybe Flurry has another kick left of them. You got to get somebody that you know is going to be part of the core and the guys' names that have popped up that might be available are Gibson and Anaheim and possibly Saros and Nashville who are proven studs. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I speak for Gibson firsthand from how many times he stoned us against um, against. He's got to stay healthy. But if they're willing to move something like that, you've got to you, you've got to be willing to talk about a player you don't want to move, like possibly a Bouchard, who um, who uh, on the back end. I mean, I know their defense is, but for a guy that's got all this offensive upside, I'm not seeing a great commitment to defense on his end. Maybe you can, he's got to be attractive. He's got a cap hit that's up there. That's going to make a little bit more sense moving off from, I think he's 4.5 million or something like that. You don't want to move him, but these teams aren't going to take, you know, Warren Fogle, no disrespect or, or something that you can't even right. put in your lineup that's got four wins to take somebody's superstar off the other team. And it's, it's a hard call to make when you've got a team that's 10 points ahead of the standings, that is clearly in a rebuild. Like Anaheim, I think it's 10 points ahead. Like they, it, so, you know, You've got, you want to be, obviously, you want to be in a position of strength. There's not any part of what Kenny's sitting in his chair where he's got a position of strength where this team's going. Foots. And what holes are. I want to back you up about like seven minutes ago, I think. I don't know how. All kidding aside, you're telling me now everything's on the table in Edmonton. Is that what you're hearing? Would that include? Everything but, everything that, but McDavid and Dry's idol. No, not, not Leon. No, not for me. No, not those two guys. I, I, not not under any circumstance would I put them out there. Um, now, if this continues for a little bit longer, because I do think this this group, if they can if they can get some solid goaltending, I mean, they're another team that could use a player like Tanev. And you're going to have to move off some salary. And I mean, and of course, they're saying you're going to have to try and get Jack Campbell put in a, in a deal. But I mean, it's hard. I mean, you've got a lot of guys, if you look at it there with with like Nugent Hopkins with long deals, you know, Darnell Nurse got 9.5, but you've got to start talking about players that you would not have thought when the season started that they were available, but I would not at this stage go anywhere near McDavid and Dry's idol. Um, but those are the only two that I would, uh, that I would. And, and the thing is, it's, it's not funny, but it's kind of when things are going bad, it's really going bad. It's like getting hit in the head with a, sh a puck in the warm up when you're like in the high slot. Like yeah. Usually, guys are hitting the head around the net. That thing came off like an Indian rubber ball and hits a guy in the high slot. That's telling them when things aren't going your way. But if like next year, Connor Brown, everybody's like, okay, next year we got an extra. The cap's going up. Well, next year with Connor Brown having played his ten you know, his 10 games, he's an additional $3 million on the salary cap next year. So it's, it's a tough one. And I love Connor Brown and the guy that did the contract that got Connor Brown, that contract was yeah. Jeff Jackson. So uh, when he was still an agent, so it's, it's a tough one to make that team any better, but you've got to go all in and, and you can't be looking at guys that normally 
when teams call about some of your young studs, you would have just laughed and said, no way, he's not, he's not available. Now everybody's available. Who do you got this afternoon between Washington and Dallas? Just pick the opposite. If Dallas, <laughs> if Dallas loses to Washington, you will find me at a local pub. <laughs> <laughs> I will throw, I will be throwing it to the wind, but uh, no, I, I'm taking Dallas. So, All right, pal. Well, listen, appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of uh, your football afternoon. I appreciate it. Sorry There's about this. the seven-minute run, Kipper. Yeah, <laughs> you're good to go, bud. You're good to go. Appreciate it, man. Mike Thanks, Fluda, guys. former NHL executive, sports net hockey analyst. Always fun having him on the show. You know, that Connor Brown, I'm a big fan. Like, love the person, really like the player. He's making league minimum, whatever. 12 games, zero, zero, yeah. zero. He's also coming off seven. a... Zeros? No, not He's even. Sam Mitchelling. And he's playing 15 minutes a night. Had a major surgery yeah. last year at the beginning of last season with the Washington Capitals. I, I like the fit. With him in He's Washington going down, unfortunately, it was in a contract year. I'm sure in a perfect world, he would have liked his 25, 30 goals and put himself in a position of $5 million a year. Yeah, grab a four times five or, you know, some sort of yeah. contract. But, yeah, it's, it, it's a tough. That's a funny situation, though, to have the guy who negotiates it yeah. take over the team that, you got it signed with. But he's also making no money, right? So it's not like he's got to get rid of the deal he signed. Yeah. He, he's like, it's a fine deal. We just need something from him. Did we get to uh, Sheldon Keefe's clip on Ryan Reeves? Do we expect to see Ryan this weekend? We did not get to any clips, I don't think. Did we? No. No. no, no. All right. Can, let's we, go to, let's yeah, go to Sheldon great. Keefe on Ryan Reeves. Yeah, he's just been able to try to maximize the days that we've had. Obviously, we haven't played a lot of games, so he hasn't missed a ton of game action, you know, when you look at look at it relative to the to the period of time it's been since he's last played. So it's just about maximizing the practice reps, and he's had a couple of good days of practice here, um, you know, and, and he's, a, he's a part of our team. He's an important part of our team. He's a, he's a presence uh, around our room, and he's continued to keep a, a good attitude, which, which we've loved. And he's a professional all the way through. Uh, he recognizes that the team's responded well here in the last little bit. Um, you know, but we, we still recognize that he's a, a, a piece of our team, that we've, we've got to make sure we're continuing to maximize every day that he gets to keep him ready. You know, I, he's saying all the right things. As, Who, Sheldon? Yeah, Sheldon, yeah. as a... As, a guy that is on the first of a three-year deal. There was a major commitment to him. Mm -hmm. But someone just needs to ask Sheldon, can can you trust him when he's on the ice? That that, And if the answer is yes, then you, you got to put him back out there. I'm sorry. but uh, I think that's a good way to look at it. Like, if you believe that this guy can be a contributor to your team, he's got to play. You know, you gotta, he's on a three-year contract. You're 12 games in or whatever. He's, he's just not going to play again? Well, that's it. You um, can't. I'm... I'm <laughs> You can't, and I'm sure Tree Living's going. Hey, like I signed this guy, give him a chance to play through it. You can't just go; it hasn't worked. He's got to play. He, he was right to come out, but he's got to go back okay. in. If, if, if you look, but maybe if, if you look at the schedule, is there not a better opportunity to get him back in than tomorrow afternoon against Chicago? Like, what are you going to do? Put him up uh, in Pittsburgh against yeah. Carlson and company? Maybe they'll fight Dubis. But I don't know. You know what I'm Kip, saying? I don't know. It's send a real message. <laughs> you really send a message. Where well, a I mean, if he's in the press box, now. you get him. And yet yeah, the team know. seems to be turning around a little bit. And Mc, uh, McMahon. Yeah. But McMahon hasn't, like, set the world on fire. No, but he's not. I know. He minus. Looks, yeah. He looks like an NHL three player. a night. Yeah. He four checks and he's fast and the puck is in the offensive zone more when he's out there. That's no a tough one for, for Sheldon to manage moving forward here it is because how do you talking to tree living he's going look here are my results with this guy no, here they are I'm, with this I'm, guy I'm getting, what do you want me I'm to getting do killed with klingberg yeah. I, I need some of my guys to look better for me please yeah and you know the leafs record with klingberg not in the lineup pretty good their record with reeves out pretty good like it's made a difference so Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Darren Pang, former NHL goalie, and uh, does a terrific job covering the National Hockey League with TNT. We'll get to him uh, after the break, and we'll keep going on the Leaf edition of the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. Welcome back to the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. As we get set to welcome in Darren Pang, and he's south of the border, so I fully expect him to be on a, a Zoom call 
wearing an apron. The turkey leg hanging yes. out of his mouth. Okay. We're Is he cooking? Cooking with Panger? Not a chance. <laughs> not no a way. chance. No. You're not even in the kitchen. You, you know, Kip, Kipper, Lynn and I are in Chicago here. I'd like to show you outside Chicago here, but we are uh, we're actually um, going to go to a restaurant. We're going to do something rare. Um, not going to cook. Going to enjoy it. Have a nice big glass of red and uh, celebrate Thanksgiving here. Well, happy uh, Thanksgiving to you, pal. Um, doing a terrific you job, too, as always, on TNT. Uh, I'll, I'll open it up to you in just terms of, you know, where you think the biggest storyline is. Um, you know, we've been absorbed here by the Edmonton Oilers, but uh, where do you want to open it up? Is it uh, Vancouver start, uh, Edmonton? I'll, I'll let you pick. Wow, look at you. That's a just a Thanksgiving handoff right there <laughs> i'm just thankful we have you like john madden just got a big piece of the bird right there i like i love it kipper um you know i was just in i was actually just in florida um for last night's tnt game boston and florida and and uh you know the one thing i'll give a shout out to is the fans of the of the florida panthers that place has been jammed and the the enthusiasm there the the um uh, you know, you used to go there, and if it was the the Boston Bruins coming into the Toronto Maple Leafs or, or Montreal Canadiens or whatever team, uh, you know, it'd be pri primarily when the visiting team scored, the place would go nuts. But it's changing, and I think that that ride last year, getting to the Stanley Cup final, beating Boston in Game Seven, the way that they played and rallied uh, throughout the playoffs and to get into the playoffs, and so that was an impressive thing. And the other part of it is the Boston Bruins. Uh, Kipper, you'll love this, but last night I'm talking to Jim Montgomery before the game and. Uh, there's this little common area in the Panthers visiting area, and it was the dad's trip. And uh, who peeks around the corner and opens up the door to come in and say hello to uh, Jim Montgomery and, and some of the staff there is uh, the great Robert Gordon Orr. And so uh, not only was it the big dad's trip right there, I saw Louis DeBrusque uh, there as well, but it was uh, the greatest was was there in, in, in Bobby Orr. So that was real good. Um, I'll go with Boston's saying that Jim Montgomery thought that of previous games they played, Florida Panthers were their toughest opponent so far. I've had many teams tell me that their toughest opponent has been the Vancouver Canucks so far, um, every aspect of their game. And uh, and so those are two great compliments. And at the end of the whole whole story is the Boston Bruins and how well they're playing right now. So um, I, I think you can throw that that threesome in a group right there and and, and it'd be a pretty good start for us. For sure. Panger, we, uh, you know, we've been starved for Leafs games here this week. Haven't had any, but they get to play the Chicago Blackhawks, who you're spending a lot of time on this season. Uh, Sammy's got a stat for us here today. Fewest games to 10 career NHL goals by a first overall pick. OV 14, Lindros 16, Bedard 17. Tell us about the evolution from game one to where he's at now. Has he changed or is it just the same guy? Just keep shooting it in the net. Um, You know what? I, I think he's... Honestly, I think he's he's shown his competitiveness a little bit more. Even in last night's game, although I didn't do that game, I was actually just watching a little bit ago, and there was a scrum in front of the net, and uh, you know, and and someone was poking and prodding around, and he he got jabbed a little bit. And he gave it right back to them. I've noticed in the corners, he's he's um you know he's he's fighting and battling for pucks. It's not just the shot; it's his it's his overall commitment to the game that's uh, that's been really impressive. Now, the shot itself is wicked. I mean. I, I've watched often in practice thinking, okay, could, would I be able to find that puck off his stick? And there's something in the way that he slings it that you guys have already dissected and broken down. But it is that is remarkable. But I think he's the the way to describe um the way to describe Connor Bedard is he's not a one-trick pony. He's uh he's got a lot of attributes to his game. And and what I'm seeing that I really enjoy is that competitiveness. He does not like losing, he does not like having a bad shift, he does not like being beaten one-on-one -on -one by a defenseman. Um, recently he went up against, uh, Nashville in Nashville. They had Jeremy Lozon on him all the time. You know, he's a big Hulkin defenseman. And then you've got, and Ryan O'Reilly, you know, stripping pucks. And I think at the end of the game, he's, he, he said to me, he goes, man, that like that Ryan O'Reilly's a good player. And, you know, and I think that for a young 18 year old, you notice some of the nuances of the game face offs, um, you know, how you, how you come back hard in your own zone and just be strong on stick. So. Um, all in all, though, I will say this about Connor, that he just every single game, he learns something new and and he doesn't take this in stride. And he's not just floating out there. The guy, the kid is trying. He's trying hard. He's uh, he's battling and he's uh, and he's got a little bit of, the, uh, of an edge that I didn't know that he had. The Chicago Blackhawks uh, panger announced that uh, 
that Taylor Hall is going to undergo surgery and actually be out the rest of the regular season. And um, I'm just wondering now, uh, like you got 60 plus games to go. Uh, I know Taylor Hall will never contend for a Hart Trophy ever again, but that's a bona fide National Hockey League player that you surrounded Connor Bedard around. And they seem a little far and few in Chicago. Is there a sense that, you know, we can't go 60 games here without helping the kid out a little bit? Yeah, I, I, it's going to be interesting what uh, what Kyle Davidson ends up doing right now. Listen, they've got tons of cap space. I mean, you know, that's why they've, you know, they've taken on some contracts in the past and uh, and received assets in return to doing it. And I think he's managed that exceptionally well. Um you know, Taylor Hall's, this is going to be an ACL surgery. So, you know, this is a tough one for Taylor. He's been really, I give him a lot of credit. He's played some games that uh, I ne- I didn't think he was going to play. Um, maybe, maybe didn't have to play, um, but he wanted to be on that ice and he wanted to make a commitment. And he cer- certainly showed his teammates uh, how much he wanted to be out there. So after the C was out with a groin um, and now with Corey Perry's, you know, situation last night that there's very little information on um, uh, Kipper, but you know, those are those are big holes in the leadership department. And so um not sure exactly what what's going to be had, but they, they've got, you know, they've got some guys in the minors that are going to come up. I mean, Anderson's coming up. Uh, Cole Gutman started last year. He had a really good camp. I mean, they've got a they've got a group of players that are knocking on the door. They're, they're not you know, they're not exactly NHL. I'm not saying difference makers, but but they're good NHL players that because of the numbers had to be sent down to the American Hockey League in Rockford. So they'll get an opportunity. But uh I'll, you know, at the, at the, I guess at the end of the day, uh, you want to surround, you know, a guy like Connor Bedard and and uh, Lucas Reichel. And I tell you who's been really good is that Philip Kurashev. I mean, mm-hmm. you'll see him tomorrow night. He's number 23. They're on the same line. And he is a he's a heady player. You'll really enjoy watching uh, uh, Philip Kurashev as well. So, um, but at this particular point, there's going to be some challenges and there's going to be some games in which they turn around and they beat really good teams because that's what they've done this year in the limited amount of wins they've they've had they beat good teams and they beat good teams on the road you guys saw that when they went into toronto they went into tampa bay um they they won in pittsburgh so um just when you count this group out they'll uh they'll come up with a a, a really uh a really good game and a competitive game and i think luke richardson deserves a lot of credit for that panger uh, you just mentioned it Corey perry for those of uh, you watching or listening to our show uh he did not play last night and he didn't participate in practice today correct that's right. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, that's don't... exactly right. This there, there's no information though. Kipper coming out of uh, here. Luke Richardson's press conference today. He started it with that and, and just let everybody know that there's going to be no more comment internally. Um, you know, so in a situation like this, I think you just let things uh, unfold. And and he's been such a great pro, as you well know, his entire career. And so uh, it obviously came as a surprise. Um, you know, prior to the game that he's a healthy scratch. So I don't have any more information for you than that. But uh, I mean, boy, oh boy, just, you know, hope that everything's good. He's, he's a, he's, he's, he was a good, really good addition. I mean, I love being around Corey. I love talking hockey with him. The guy's a rink rat. He's got a little boy that's six Griffin that's at the rink all the time. So Corey's not only on the rink with the, uh, you know, here with the Hawks or other teams that he's played with, he's always at the rink uh, with minor hockey. So I know how much he loves that. So we'll, anyway, we'll find out a little bit more about that. But in the meantime, I, I guess I wouldn't expect him for tomorrow night's game. Panger, I imagine other teams are looking at the Blackhawks and going, okay, that's one of the few teams with cap space um, who kind of knows that it's not going to be a playoff year. Are there some names on the on their team right now that you imagine by playoffs will be somewhere else? Like, I don't know if Corey Perry might be one of those names, depending on what's going on with him or uh, the goaltenders. Anyone you see is... Uh, you know, someone that could be poached off the Blackhawks. Well, we're we're early in that game there. I know, I know. Uh, JB, it's uh, I mean that's a that's a tough one. I, I I'm I'm gonna just you know like we we all know what happens come playoff time and, and what kind of players you know become very important cogs. In fact, they had one last year in Sam Lafferty that went to the Leafs and and played very well, and now he's playing well in in Vancouver. I mean, guys that have honestly the the guys that have played well that are that are. Um, that are character guys more on the on the PK kind of side of it and, and guys that can handle the three, four, you know, lines, you know, a guy like I know you you've seen him before, but Jason Dickinson has has played, mm-hmm. I think he's played really well. Um I, I think Nick Felino is, you know, he's he's honestly found the fountain of youth. He gets a lot of responsibility here. He's in a big leadership role. Uh, I think he's been I, I think he's been terrific here. You mentioned Corey Perry as well. 
Um, but, but after that, they've got some young, you know, they've got some really young players that still are finding their way in the NHL. And um, the other guy that played really well was Peter Morazic. Um, he wasn't on the ice uh, today, um, got, you know, didn't uh, finish last night's game. One of the rare games that he didn't actually uh, perform well or be one of the first three stars in the game. He's been excellent so far this year. So um, that's, that. you know, that's kind of the group that they've got right now. So I think as it goes along, you'll find that the, the character of the team it will still stay there. They play hard. They play competitive, and uh, and just you know. So we'll we'll see down the stretch. Just and I, at We're, this particular point, I'm not sure where you know what kind of players would be out there. We are chatting up Darren Pang, former NHL goalie, color analyst for NBC Chicago, NHL on TNT, and mm -hmm. my favorite golf buddy. Although he didn't invite me to Michael Jordan's new golf course. Yeah. Hey, did you really play that? Yesterday, did, uh, two days ago, yeah, did, I flew in. Um, I flew in early. Um, big commitment. Got the early flight. Knew that I could uh, get out there to Hope Sound, uh, just north of Jupiter. Um, again, Gretz, uh, Wayne Gretzky is the, the the greatest uh, playmaker of all time, and he's also does that when when uh, when he uh, assists on some golf. So he he set it up. I got to play with a good buddy of mine from a long time ago. We played with the Nepean Baby Raiders when we were six and seven years old and the Belleville oh. Bulls as well, Danny Quinn. So uh, it was, it was a great day. Uh, Michael Jordan's course is outstanding. It's, it's, you know, I'm hitting balls and um, Dustin Johnson was finishing off his ninth hole. Oh, um, yeah. He was actually, he didn't, he just played nine holes with the guy that I, the guys that I ended up playing with and he, he was okay for nine holes and he, he didn't play anymore. Stop. I was like, I'm, man, I'm I drooling. Play with us. But, uh, I'm drooling. Stop yeah, they, it. But you know, I mean, Justin, the, the guys are always there that Justin Thomas and Ricky Fowler and Patrick Cantley. And, and when I actually signed my contract with the Blackhawks, I was in the back uh, driving range, getting ready to play during the playoffs last year. And I had to, I had to find on my little phone, the docu sign, you know, the way you got <laughs> yeah. you know, kind of, if they're, I'm trying to sign this thing, and I hear Ricky Fowler hitting little chip shots on one side, and Patrick Cantley and Justin Thomas are hitting wedges on the other side, and they're probably looking at this old who's Mister Magoo over there in the middle of the range <laughs> trying to sign a document. But <laughs> who does he know? Shout out, exactly. Shout out for Dan Quinn, who uh, always looks after me at uh, Del Rey uh, at his course. Shout out to Dan Quinn, who yes. I'd like to meet they, and become yeah, friends with. I'll play with Dan Quinn. Did, uh, Dan, give did, us a call. Did they bring you lunch in one of, with the, what do you call those things? It's been in a, a helicopter? No, no, oh. no. No, <laughs> the, they, they have lunch dropped in. Drone? Drone, on with a drone. Did you get lunch with a drone? You're starting to sound like me. You can't figure out what Oh, my God, I'm horrible. <laughs> Mini helicopter with no pilot. How's that? Is that Does that give you a clue what you I'm talking it. about? You nailed it. Oh, my God. This is not my era, these drones. I'm sorry. I'm the dinosaur. You know what? Actually, I've, I've played there now four times, and I think the drones must be gone. Because <laughs> Somebody and, took them down. you know me. I enjoy a cocktail or two, but the, there's been no drones uh, bringing them to me, so... Maybe they're maybe they're gone. All right, listen. I, I got uh, off the golf. Derailed. I got one more question for you. Uh, have you covered the Washington Capitals at all? Because uh, mm -hmm. Strom the other day scored with what less than ten seconds to go to give them another win over Buffalo. Uh, they won five in a row. I'm looking at their record. They're like eight one and one. I think the last ten games. Like, but here's the but. It's not. It's not with Ovi scoring a ton of goals here. And I don't know, is this, is, is the chase for Gretzky a little slower than we thought right now? Well, I saw him in his, in his driveway uh, in front of his boy, um, Sturge, and he, uh, he scored nine goals into the empty net on the slap shot. <laughs> Do you guys see that on social media? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> It was it was actually it was actually pretty good. He was just rifling slap shots, and his boy was just giggling. It was it was actually pretty good. I've done you know what I have done a couple of games, and um, obviously I keep in touch with uh, with Kirk Muller quite a bit, and uh, he is having as he said to me the most fun he's had in an awful long time coaching. He says the coaching staff they can't wait to get to the rink. There's an enthusiasm there even early in the year when they weren't playing well. They've tried to incorporate a few different things, especially with Backstrom not being there. But, you know, they're, they're trying to, and I think, Kipper, one day you were you were talking about their power play, and I, I sent you a note saying, you know, there's a lot of times the adjustment has been they're trying to go to, to the other side of the goal line and make some plays towards Ovi a little bit more and, and get harder to the net. Um, in, instead of everything going 
half, you know, half boards, goal line, goal line, slot, bumper to there, and then look for that great seam pass. Um, they're just trying to change things up because I think over the years they've been a little predictable. And I think that's a big adjustment that they had early on. And they were getting frustrated from their lack of success and lack of sustained uh, puck possession in the offense zone on the power play. So they, they've shored up those things. Uh, I'll say this about them being at ice level. There is a certain spirit that they have. And I, I, I look to my left when I'm between the benches and I, I see Kirk Muller and he's you know, he's, he's, he does what he does best. He brings a great enthusiasm and some positivity and same with uh same with Carberry. And it's it, the way that they are as coaches, uh, Mitch loves a new, new coach on that staff as well. The longtime American hockey league guy that fought everybody and anybody that he could fight to stay in any league he could play in. So I think that's one thing that you can talk about with the Washington capitals that they're the, the change is happening right now. Um, no one's getting moved. There's TJ Oshie is, going to be there. Uh, Ovechkin's going to be there. I mean, they're, you know, it's that same group of players. And I think everybody's like, okay, this is our group of guys. This is how we're going to play. And this is how we're going to be successful. So I think eventually you'll see that Ovi, you know, gets on track and gets more opportunities. But in the meantime, it's probably not the same distribution getting the pucks to his side as it was before. And that'll be the adjustment. Washington, he'll, score, yeah. he'll score 20 goals from the crease. That is my guess this year. Jamming that big body, 240 pounds, right to the goalie's toes in the crease. That's how he's going to score most of them this year. Maybe not the one-timers. Washington currently sitting second in the Metro Division. Hey, Panger, great stuff, man. Thanks for doing this on your American Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful dinner tonight at uh, where? Big Boys, did you say? I hop. <laughs> yeah, we're going some... Uh, it's a big boy place with big boy food and <laughs> All big right, boy pal. glasses of wine. <laughs> Have a great night. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, you guys as well. I look forward to that game against the Leafs tomorrow afternoon. Take All care, right. guys. And speaking of the Leafs tomorrow afternoon, yes. uh, Samsonov against Chicago, yeah. Joseph Wall against Pittsburgh. I think that's a bit of a statement. What's the statement? Samsonov's the starting goalie. The statement Sat is Saturday night in hockey night. Uh, Canada's the backup wall, game. Wall Wall gets the more important game oh. of the two. I see. I think this is. I guess I'm just Babs, but I think you start your best guy in the first game, no matter what. Like I feel like that's yeah. a more of a starting goalie scenario. Even depends regardless of who the opponent is. If you're playing this first half of yeah. back to back, I, you put I, your best yeah, goalie. I, in the first I don't game. agree with that. No, no. I, I want. I want my, uh, the best goalie to go up against. Babs is the type Crosby. of guy you want to agree with all the time. So <laughs> you're always on Babs' <laughs> side. You, this yeah. guy. Let me see that phone. Hundred percent alive with Babs. Check yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, it's just me though. It's just me. Yeah. He might be right. Yeah. I hate to say it, <laughs> but he could be right that you just put your best goalie in to get the the closest win first how do you feel about declaring the goalie for the second game like what if samsonov stinks and wall goes in plays two periods and you've already said he's gonna well you can say this is our plan oh yeah, yeah. and i guess if it changes you just go yeah, yeah. we do i didn't think our goalie would stink there you go okay you can always that big change your mind you sure can as we do often on this show yeah if we didn't it'd be a dull season interested in seeing what timmons brings tomorrow yeah, that's I love this part of the season where it's like I'm pumped about Timmin. Well, I'm pumped. No, I know. I wouldn't say pumped. Someone new to watch and see if there's yeah. some juice there. Yeah. Six points in the regular year preseason. Okay, plenty Jack still more Campbell. to come. That, point was a, that was a good point by Feuds. Jack yeah. Campbell at a 970. <laughs> Oil were undefeated. All right, we got plenty to go here still. Yeah. Luke Gazdick, Sportsnet analyst, former NHLer, will talk Edmonton Oilers and what we saw and what might be next. For them so we have a ton including american thanksgiving what do we believe in jb you're a numbers guy 77 mm percent -hmm. in the playoffs make it like the leafs odds we got a lot to talk about stick around real kipper and born we are back for our national hour on the real kipper and born show we are live on sportsnet Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver and Sportsnet 960 in Calgary. This hour of Real Kipper and Born brought to you by Bet365. For the next hour, we will go in in-depth analysis on the Green Bay Packers 29-22 victory over the yes. Detroit Lions. Yeah. Well, Poor fake punt decision. We don't have any NHL games today. What else are we going to do? Um, good question. We're going to yeah. rank 
Thanksgiving foods. Oh, yeah. It's like, hey, Keeper, I got an idea. What are you most thankful for in the NHL this year? I'm thankful for you guys. Wait, what's what's the storyline you're most thankful for? I think cranberries <laughs> way overrated. Oh, yeah, See, I'm the complete this. opposite. We're it's, doing this. That, to me, that's... It's a deal breaker if you don't have it. Got to have it. Really? Yeah. I would never touch it. way too sweet. I'd rather pile on the gravy. Yeah, but to me, it's that extra kick of sweet you need with the meat because it's, you know, a drier meat in general. Happy Thanksgiving. (laughs) American Thanksgiving, of course, to our friends south of the border. And uh, we know that uh, wherever you're listening, all over this great world, however you pick us up, and now YouTube as well. We're thankful for all of you. so many good friends on YouTube that weren't very happy what up, Susie Q? <laughs> yeah, and uh, what are the other ones? Jeremiah. Oh, yeah, the sports beard. He's the and, one. Yeah. yeah, he's there. Too. Alaska. Yeah, but he found us without it. He was already, he's he's all over. He Anchorage is. represent. Yeah. He is. We've got uh, Luke Gastic will join us in a few minutes. But before that, uh, let's just get your thoughts on, again, what we saw last night from the Edmonton Oilers. This is a story that just keeps growing legs. Yeah. Today in the Toronto Star, I kind of did a, a piece on the Edmonton Oilers and how uh-huh. it's a reminder to the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I do write an article for the Toronto Star. Again, right? Not- first word important <laughs> there. The Toronto. The Edmonton Star. But I got a few notes today from, uh, I think, people in Alberta that kind of mentioned, like, what's this got to do with the Leafs? And yeah. I'm like, well, I'm just kind of comparing the thought that high expectations from two teams, and basically I I wrote 700 words of one basic message. You can't take making the playoffs for granted. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not that easy in a 32-team league. And say what you will about the Toronto Maple Leafs and their ability to choke in the first round or is it the second round now? Really good at doing that. Excellent at that. But, hey, these guys bring the numbers for 82 games (laughs) to get you there. And it's not easy. I actually, it's funny you wrote that article today because I woke up sort of thinking, I watched that whole game last night where they're dreadful for most of it. They get back into it a little bit. It was a fake comeback. But, like, can you imagine this was happening here? Well, Because uh, they're teams yeah. that have the exact, like, very, like you said, very similar Stop expectations. Offensively. Very similar see. teams. We've talked to it a million times how similar the teams are. Like, the world would be burning if they had this here. Like, mm-hmm. this would be the biggest story and it's that way, I think, in Edmonton. For sure. But I guess Toronto's just a different thing in terms of the national attention. And we know all about it's that. And people get mad at there. us. But, like, it's crazy how much this well, is happening. Well, one guy that's experienced uh, playing as an Edmonton Oiler that we can't uh, speak of uh, is our next guest. So let's bring him in. Uh, Luke Gastic. Uh, Luke, how are you, pal? Thanks for joining us. Uh, I know... Uh, you're you're covering the Oilers. You're you're watching it like the rest of the the hockey world, and it was not pretty. Uh, I guess the first 22, 23 minutes, they were down what four one at uh, at a point where you you thought maybe the the game should be just getting started. Yeah, it's frustrating, right? I, I'm heavily invested in this team, not just covering them, but. I also played there for three years, right? And I, uh, even with some of the guys that that are playing there now, still know a lot of people there. And covering them now, it's frustrating as ever. Uh, I mean, even a game like last night, you settle into the chairs at the studio and, you know, I'm expecting a good start. And it's just uh, the same old story again. Uh, it's it's watching this, the same record uh, spin around and the same story unfold. Uh, game after game it's been it, it's been tough covering them because it's it's really tough to find any positives to 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 flip on this and uh all in all it's uh it's starting to spiral out of control for these guys Gaza, now i've been going up against these two in studio here on the oilers and you know starting to lose a little faith here myself but you know i watched the the game two two games ago you know, they have some bad luck. You know, Broberg steps on a stick and they hit Hyman on a breakout. Pucks end up in their net. Last night, Carolina's first goal kind of banks off a couple of guys and pinballs in. And, you know, it got progressively worse from there. But is there any chance this has just been a really unbelievable bad run of luck? Is there any chance or is this something just fundamentally flawed here? No, there is a chance. And you're right. Like, the bounces really haven't gone their way. Everything that can pretty much go wrong has but in saying that 
I think the, the thing I was told over my career more than anything was control what you can control. And I never really even understood that at the time. I would just listen to a co assistant coaches and tell them to beat it when they said that. And now I'm seeing, you know, the things you can control out there are your effort and your urgency. And the lack of urgency in their defensive game is so stunning. And it's just it's so tough to watch every time. I mean, def playing defense is a choice and it's hard work. For like sure. not just the posi position defense, but like playing defensive is hard work and it's not fun it's fun to go rip around in the offensive zone and score goals and cycle the puck and mix it up down there but it's tough to play defensive hockey and they're looking like they're openly making the choice that they do not want any part of playing defensive hockey right now and i think that's the most frustrating part for me is yeah the bounces are going bad but there's still some things they can't control. I did a little breakdown in between periods of the first and second. They snapped back two draws in the D zone, clean wins. And you know, as a player, you win a draw in the D zone, you have a set plan, whether it's reverse, D to D, you name it. it they, the defenseman didn't even know what to do. They just kind of, they both went for it. And then one went in CeCe's feet. Like mm -hmm. they're not even on the same page back there. So it just seems like there's just a disconnect and a lot of things that they can, they can control our self-inflicted mistakes here. Look for you. Who who kind of is the face of that lack of energy? And I don't want to pick on Evan Bouchard here, but um, I'm watching. I think the game-winning goal, Studland in in Florida, and yeah, circling. It just, I I, I just don't understand. Um, you know, basic fundamentals, uh, stopping and starting. Uh, it, just isn't there. I mean, is he kind of the poster boy for all of this or is it uh, by committee here? Yeah, I hate to look at it as one person, but he's certainly one of them. I would categorize it as their defense core as a whole has to be much more urgent in coming back for pucks. And I mean, the very first thing we're told as players in day one of every training camp you've been to since you were 10 years old is like, go back to the, to the house and stop and then sort it out. If you don't know what to do when you go back in there, put the brakes on, take a look around, see what you have and kind of sort from there. And it's these like circles back into the zone kind of coasting where it's just guys pointing at each other and not talking and just breakdown after breakdown. But for Evan, I know he's a bit of the whipping boy, but man, it just looks like when he makes mistakes, they are catastrophic. <laughs> like he doesn't make a ton. He really doesn't. Like if you watch his game, he doesn't make too many blunders. He makes up for a lot of them with how good he is offensively. He's got a point per game, man. Like it, it's, it's the mistakes he does make end up being catastrophic for their team and usually ends up in the back of their net. The goal against Florida uh that was the one i think you were you were mentioning yeah it was, was a like, uh yeah, stenland just kevin stenland, stenland goal i mean he can avoid all that by just putting on the brakes and instead he goes for a loop i don't know where he's going i don't think if i don't know if he's cheating for offense thinking the puck's going out that way but it's just simple decision making of just putting on the brakes and going from there yeah I'm fascinated by the big mistake guys, you know, like uh, whether here in Toronto is Jake Gardner for a while, the guys who are really good players, but just kind of make these like, oh my God, errors at times. It seems to be a whole genre of player. Um, yeah, I was talking a little bit about uh, the coaching here in the show. They obviously get rid of Woodcroft. They bring in Chris Knobloch. Um, you know, I, you know, could you give the guys some slack with a new coach that maybe they're trying new things or things are different what are your thoughts on the decision to go away from Woodcroft and kind of how the change in coaching staff has affected what has been a pretty rocky last, well, transition, frankly, the last five games that nobuck has been there. Yeah. Switching coaches mid year is tough for anyone. I went through a couple of those. Um, you know, I played for Jay. I had him, I had him as an assistant coach in Edmonton. He uh, ran the forwards and, uh, he uh he's a good man he he uh was very detailed extremely meticulous in in his game and his teaching and the way he goes about things i wasn't a fan of it at the time to be honest i i you you could see the things that the that the guys were doing and a lot of these bad habits that were creeping into their game and for the longest time i was on the side of i really don't think changing the coaches 
is going to be the right thing to do. But sometimes that can really spark your team and really turn things around, kind of just put a jolt in the room and, and change morale a little bit. It can get, I don't want to say stale, but listening to the same things over and over again from the same guy can get stale after a while. So at the same time, I'm thinking, you know, maybe this is a good thing, but knobs has come in and you're seeing the exact same things happen now so i uh, you would expect uh you know a little bit of time for system stuff to come in and i really haven't seen that many changes you know in in stuff like that in x's and o's if anything you're watching a lot of the same mistakes and, and the same habits which is the most frustrating thing not just for me but for fans and viewers of of the team of of watching this Oilers team is it's the same stuff that was happening with Woody is happening with Chris. And I, I don't, I, I like the hire, to be honest. I, I don't know a lot about Chris. I, I at first wanted them to get maybe more of an older, harder coach in there on them, but they've had that too. So I, I it's the group. And I was, I was the player. I was those guys. So I'm one of those guys and I'm usually taking their side, but you're kind of seeing now that it's on the boys here. It's it's on the players to turn this thing around. I don't think anyone's going to do it for them. We're talking to former National Hockey Leaguer, Sportsnet hockey analyst Luke Gazdick. Luke, uh, the body language for me quite concerning. Connor McDavid and, and Leon Dreisaitl. And yes, the focus is as early as tomorrow night when they go into Washington before uh, going back home against uh, Anaheim and Vegas. But when does the conversations are less about preparing for the next game or two and they turn like long term and what's going to happen to Leon come this summer when he's eligible to sign a new extension or what happens in two years from now with Connor? How do you see that scenario kind of playing out when it comes to concerns for Edmonton fans? Uh, I hear them loud and clear. And for, for a guy like Leon, especially with the body language, I see, I see the biggest difference between last year and this year is they would go down in games last year, two, three, heck four goals. And you wouldn't even think twice they could rip a comeback. It, it really didn't matter. And now, as soon as you see them go down in games, it's shoulder shrugs, it's body language, it's showing visible clear frustration of oh no like this is happening again and it's kind of like that poor me uh this is happening again our goalie let in a couple um this is this is the way i'm gonna act now and that that's the most one of the most frustrating signs to watch for me but i know those guys both want to be there and they, they don't want to go anywhere they they want to make it work in edmonton i know how much they both love being there and love playing there and how much they both want to make it work. Um, so I don't, I, I mean, I'm trying not to look too far ahead. Those are two pieces. I heard Mike Feud on here earlier and I kind of echo his sentiment in those are two absolutely untouchables, obviously Connor, but I'm starting to hear the Leon discourse now about maybe it's time to be looking at moving him. And for me, I'm completely against that. I think you have to try about everything else in your repertoire before you look ahead to moving one of those guys. Cause I look at a situation like here in Toronto with Willie mm -hmm. and about him possibly moving on. It's tough to get really, really good players in this league to actually want to play in a Canadian city like Toronto, like Edmonton, you can see how much harder it is with the state taxes and guys not wanting to deal with media. It's rare that you have players that really want to be there. And I know that those two guys really want to be there. And I, I would try not to look too far ahead to the contract extensions and kind of take this uh, one week at a time and, and see if they can maybe add a piece or a goaltender or whatever it is to, to try to salvage what they have here this year. Yeah, no, it, it's, I'm totally with you there. It's uh, impossible to even contemplate what a return would look like on a guy like dry saddle. We were talking before the show about like the trade value of a contract and his is, I mean, he's 28, he's six, two, two, 10. He's won a heart trophy, right? He's an extremely rare, valuable talent that makes very little money. So got to keep him. 
The the thought about the goaltending, Stu Skinner gets back in the net. To me, I didn't love the fourth goal he gives up, you know, but all goalies give up some weak ones. You know, how disheartening, how much of their lack of success so far is on the crease kind of letting them down? And do you think they have to go outside the team? Or is it a thing where the guys can just say, we know these guys have played better before and you just kind of cross your fingers and wait it out? Yeah, the way I look at it is, yeah, we talked about the bad bounces and there's some goals where he's both goalies, all three, put Jack in there too, have been absolutely hung out to dry. But when's the last time we looked at this Oilers team and or watched a game and post game we're going, wow, you know, player X or goalie X stole that one. game for yeah. us, right? Like as a play, as a former player, you just needed nights like that. Some nights where you just weren't going right or or things weren't clicking. Uh, you gave up some chances and your goalie bailed you out and you came back after the game and you're like, man, we wouldn't have had a chance without, you know, buddy and that call it Stu Skinner. And I just I, I'm trying to remember when the last time we said that about the Oilers, I mean, Skinner had 31 saves versus the Islanders last Monday, but he wasn't fantastic. Didn't have to do anything really spectacular. So for me, it's like they're not bailing him out in net, but sometimes if if it gets through check one and through check two and then under a stick, under a seam, you need your goalie to come up with huge saves just every now and then to bail the boys out. And just they haven't seen any of that. It's It's just been the same the same story and the same performance by whoever is in that net. I would truly, truly think that they're looking high and low to, to put someone in the, in the crease that can, can make some of those stops. I, I really think that would send a huge boost of energy, energy and jolt through the locker room to add somebody. I don't know who that is, but I'd expect them to try something just because Borny like, it's you just you need your goalie to steal you some nights and right now it's just not happening we know what the stats say as far as the american thanksgiving uh target or or deadline where, where are you uh they have any chance at all under the current team the roster or you need a major change to still give them a shot and if that change is coming when yeah, I think they I honestly think they need a change. They need they need something just to at least like now. Yeah, at least as a message from management to the players saying, "Hey, we're not giving up on this season." Cuz kind of looks like that right now with you the worst thing they could do is just status quo, just stand still right now. Like make a move and I think that would go a long way in management showing the team and the boys like, "Hey, you guys might think we're giving up on this thing, but we're not like, here's some help. And I know they're up against the cap, but that's your job. Like good GMs get things done. And I don't care if you're up against the cap, like figure it out. And I, I think something has to be made here. I read a, I read a tweet. I think the Oilers after 18 games have a worse record than Eakins, my second year in Edmonton, mm -hmm. that led to drafting Connor. And I understand the expectations were different, uh, but I remember going to the rink at those times and just how miserable it was and walking on eggshells and just every day you were waiting, waiting for something to happen. And I, I know expectations were a lot different for this team, but I truly think that they, they have to make a move in here and, and shake things up to at least send a message to the team that uh, that they're, they're trying to salvage this as well. Hey, Luke, great stuff, man. Keep up the great work on uh, Sportsnet. Thanks, guys. Anytime. Thanks, buddy. Luke Appreciate Gastic. it. Yeah, that's some good insight on the Soil team. It's like, there's no, no Superman coming. But and, I like... I like Gretzky's what he, not walking through that door. I love what he said about... Just get getting someone else, mm -hmm. like another goalie. I know it's Pickard or whatever you call him up, but like, just it doesn't have to be Soros. It just has to be someone. I know, uh, but you look. You got to make sure it's the right thing, the right one. You're gonna have to give something up. You just can't. You, you can't be so desperate that you're you're throwing up against the wall to see if it sticks here. Well, but you're, not, you're not that desperate at this point. But you imagine are desperate, but you. 
you got to act like a professional. Well, Jack Sammy. Campbell had a shutout in, in Bakersfield, you, so maybe he's coming back. You know, even if they were he, Ken Holland, we believe isn't coming back. No. He, there's still a responsibility, as bad as it is. There's still a responsibility to not actually make it even worse. Well, and how about if you go out and do something big? You go spend assets to get someone. You're five and twelve. Yeah, like you know, you spend assets, and all of a sudden that brings you to a worse draft pick and miles from the playoffs. Still, like it, it could be a real bad luck if you get aggressive this far out. So, did you want to do the the American Thanksgiving thing here? Because we just mentioned it with Luke. Yeah, I. Yeah, I, are listen, you got the standings in front of you? I wouldn't. I wouldn't write it in stone right now for Edmonton Oilers to not. I get on a run, but yeah, you will because it's easy to because yeah. you just don't see them turning around and getting you watch 640, games, 650 production. Like nobody snaps their fingers and then turns around and wins seven out of ten games. No, so, not playing this way. No, my my guy who runs HockeyViz dot com, Micah mm-hmm. Blake McCurdy. He yep. does. Uh, he's got some like you know playoff odds based on the roster you have, past successes, you know, scheduled to come, whatever. He has the Oilers at a thirty nine percent chance of making playoffs. playoffs? <laughs> Don't talk about playoffs, <laughs> which seems high, which seems high. But I'm that's kind of how I feel about it. Thirty nine. You know, I'm digging in against you guys, not because I think they're over fifty, but because I think they're better than five. Yeah. I, you know, like I don't, I don't think say this. To, I don't say cooked. this to be sexy. It's not like I don't watch the Oilers. I watch them play, and they're just bad a lot of nights. But man. you know what, Sam? Did we just they did can't this. get a save. It's like we ah. did this with Tampa. Is and Tampa there's... done? And then we went through the roster, and they have all these good players: yeah. McDavid, Drysaddle, yeah. R and H, Hyman, Kane. You know, Eckholm, Nurse. They have players, guys. Nugent Hopkins has got like one goal in like fifteen games. But we have a sample of ten okay. years where he's a really good player. Okay, but he's not. A hundred point guy. That was a career no, year, much not. like Jonathan Huberto had in in Florida. Sure, is he but a he's, seventy no, he's point not, guy? He's not he's this not a, bad. Yeah, exactly. He's not this bad. But you know, I, I'm I'm a little tired of hearing the the bad luck stuff. To me, uh, it, okay, it's not like yeah. Hey, everybody, let's this summer. Okay, yeah, we had some bad luck, but we're gonna come back and be a lot better now. It was just bad luck. No, you don't get to use bad luck. You I'm don't sorry. get to bad luck a 300 winning percentage. No. But bad if you're playing no. like a one and three start with yeah. a couple bad ones, not five and, and, and the, twelve. And yeah. the domino effect is that Leon Dreisaitl this summer, who's eligible to sign July 1st, goes, no, I, I like it here to Luke's point. I really like it here. And I'd like to win here. But it ain't happening. And I what, don't. winning? Winning a cup. It's not happening. Not happening. Okay. Okay. Right? Hey, 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 listen. I, I, I got to move on. I tried it here, but I can I, see him I got, saying, I got "Let's an see how this season starts next year." There's what, a, there's if a very, you don't think they're going to win a cup, and a, you think he's no, going to feel I that way, he thinks that this summer, why would I sign when in twelve months I can go somewhere else? I've given these guys ample opportunity to help me and Connor win, and it's just not happening, and. I want to go try to win a cup somewhere else. That's the domino effect of missing the playoffs this year. Your point being that the pressure is on now to go get UC Soros. The the pressure now is the domino effect of missing the playoffs and the repercussions. And it starts with Leon. What about a good push where they get close to the playoffs? They they win at a 600 clip the rest of the way. And he goes, okay, next year, if we just play like that, we're all right. Listen, there's there's always a chance, yeah. but I think I think he's been around long enough to know if that's really true or is that fool's mm-hmm. gold. Mm-hmm. It's been fool's gold on a lot of teams when the pressure's off. Yes, it has. I agree. Tough to tell. But this is an Oilers team that's won a lot of playoff rounds recently. You know, so he may see that it's not that different and may believe in it more. I get your point, Kip, that the stakes he's are high. Come, he's come this far. And then you miss the playoffs in the year that people expected you to win a Stanley Cup. It's uh-huh. it's, it's it's scary to say I'm going to commit in the next eight years. Okay, those guys at who the are, very least who you are got going a to the Hall of contract. Fame. Those guys that are going to the Hall of Fame. Okay, 
their biggest fear, their foe, fear of missing out. FOMO? FOMO. Yeah. Is, is it FOCO if it's the Stanley Cup? I shouldn't say that on air. <laughs> that was really close to not right. Is not winning the Stanley Cup. Okay? That is a hole in your heart that you know, no amount of money you. will fill. Yeah. Yes. No question. And especially a guy of Connor's level. Oh, yeah. Because guys of Connor's level always get one. Like, he is yes. one of the greatest hockey players to ever put skates on. Like, it's just, there's no way around that. And he just needs a cup. And it's like. Yeah. But does he believe. This is, this does is he year, believe what that, year is this? Does he believe staying Eight. in Edmonton the rest of his career, he will get that? I don't know. Or has he, has he, has he lost a little faith? Well, I'm sure like a lot of people on a 5-12 and 12 team, he's lost some faith. Here's the hard part with winning a Stanley Cup today in the salary cap era is if you step back at the start of the season and say, I'm going to go to the team with the best chance of winning a Stanley Cup, it's impossibly hard. There's like eight teams who have just as good a chance in any given year. And going into this year, the Oilers were in that group. And they aren't. They, they aren't a cup contender at this point. It's obvious. It's clear. But it's really hard for one of those guys to say, I want to get moved to a cup contender. I, Who is it? And then them get it right. Yeah, I'm not I'm sure. Close about that. I, I'm not well, sure. Shane, people chase it. You know, I, I get the reason why people had Edmonton Joe as, a, as a cup the favorite was <sighs> because of because of 150 points from Connor and 50 and 60 but that's goals who he from is. them. That's a real guy. But that's don't not tell Huberto's me those 150. Don't, don't tell me that they you could actually put them up against other teams when but you, you were not sure three about ago. Jack. Not with Jack Campbell and Skinner and and that defense. There's as many questions that the as the Leafs on that blue line. They weren't. They weren't there quite there. They were hopeful of people. There yeah. were people hoping yes. that Connor is good enough to make up for all those mistakes. A lot of Sportsnet employees. So yeah, a lot of Sportsnet had employees. Had in fact. Right? Had, in yeah, fact. had them in that but, group of teams. But the truth is, they weren't good enough on the blue line, and their goaltending wasn't good enough. I think they've gotten, you know, going into a year, you have a lot of questions about certain guys. They've gotten all wrong, disappointing answers. Bouchard has not taken the step to be the guy they want. Broberg has not. You know, it hasn't gone great. A lot of people, they've been going, what are we going to do with Connor Brown? This could be found money. They haven't got it. They just haven't got the answers they wanted. Skinner, Campbell, they haven't. They got bad answers on everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think every year you go into the season with some question marks on a lot of players. And the questions might have been answered by now. I think we have <laughs> a, a certain number of them. Right? So looking at the standings for the Western Conference, it's the same. So... We're with American Thanksgiving. We've arrived at the at the th oh a board. God, there we're we go around here. You look at that. Like I guess they're they're ten points back of the Kraken and the Blues. And this has been my argument too to you guys. Who do you believe in? Blues, Kraken, Ducks, Coyotes, Flames, Preds, Wild. Like it's not it's a, a murderer's of, row of talent. Bit of a dog's breakfast. Every, every, the East every, is loaded. Not everybody's here. Everybody's got to lose. When one of them's losing, one of them's winning. Uh, that's a good point. That's, okay. a, that's why you They're can't They're not all going to gonna stink at the same time. Uh, that's what we've learned in the NHL. It's a lot of teams. It's not a lot of points. It's a lot of teams. It's a lot of teams, and they play every night, and there's some nights that they play against each other, and there's some nights they, they the, the, three the, the two games. of them leave with three points. I know. 11 points. That's the issue it's here. not many at all. That's why you can go year after year now to American – Thanksgiving, and if you're at the bottom and you got to climb up three or four teams, it's really hard. Yeah, I, I actually do like the Blues. I think the Blues yeah, have, the enough, have, they have enough, like they got some guys. playoff Good pedigree for sure. Guys, they, they they can get in. I'll switch tone on them. I think but I like the Blues too. The Squids. Uh, I mean, I've watched them a few times. They're uh, not exactly they grind right. though. They do. They play they hard, grind. but they, they, just, they got Dean Goaltending. Yeah. That's always going to get you. You know, just incredibly Boys, average. Look at yes, look at exactly right. Look at Washington now. Okay. What the hell Washington's is going on there? Washington's second in the Metro. 10 4 and 2. And they have nobody lighting it up. But they don't, no one scores on them. They're amazing. Thank They're you. Just baffling. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Goals against. Yeah. They're defense. Third in the league in goals against. I think there's only two teams ahead of them, right? Boston and New York. And they're getting good goaltending. Yeah. Sandine Carlson, Edmondson Jensen, Alexia yeah. Van Riemsdyk is their decor. Okay, and now tell me uh, the scoring. 
Ovi's on pace for 25. He, he's got five Oshie goals. Oshie just scored his first goal the other day. Wow. Like, where is he? 16. He's a one and one for two. Yes. He yes. usually has that in a period. And yet, they've won five in a row because they can play defense. They're structured and they're getting good goaltending. I think they've got their wheels are coming off this their, team. Yeah, you're, you might be right. You might be right. But for now, at least they show how you can have success. Mm hmm. So Defense. You, you think that's one spot that's up for grabbing the East End the, for them? The, their third goalie's got a couple of wins. Their third goalie. I don't know what his name is. Shepard, maybe. I don't know. Is he available for the Oilers? <laughs> Go grab but yourself a Shepard. That's that's how you have success. Yeah. Keep the puck in your net. I but. think it's time. For game time? Yes. Okay. It's game time. Presented by Bet365. Visit the app for the latest odds. And find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Play responsibly. So, this sorry, Oilers fans, but I'm going back to the Oilers here. Yeah, I'm just looking at they have the uh, point totals for um, NHL futures, so you can like it's over and under for how many points guys the uh, teams will end up with, and they have the Oilers set at 93 and a half points as their total. And the um, does that make it? The, it's it's got the, it. The it's un real close. The under is now a it's it's a pretty big favorite. I would say it's a uh, where am I at here? Sorry, minus one fifty favorite for them to be under now, plus one twenty for them to be over that that number. So it's a favorite. So they're starting to think here. The book the books have shifted in a shi week. It's shifted like they had them in the playoffs a week ago. Yeah, yeah. and it's really starting to shift. Wow, a couple that, of losses. Uh, I thought that that Carolina one was just so telling to me. It's like that's. It was we dubbed it their biggest game of the season. <laughs> they went down you can see, uh, uh, Sam showed it on our telecast last night. Where like, okay, we we saw, we saw Darnell Nurse take one off the beak. That was right, brutal, brutal, and he's got the double he looked, stuff nose. And how tough are these guys? Right, I'd be crying. He's like, he's <laughs> this Anyways, you know, I, I get it. It's just, just a snowball coming right when at things you. Things are going wrong, man, and then. Skinner's like trying to stop. Oh my god, that was a wheel. And he's like, oh and I think I saw him during the game, like fall over on a guy coming down the wing. And it's like, you know what it is? This is this is like a, a script. It's like a, like you wrote a Hollywood script on to, what could go wrong. To me, it's like when you're having a bad day, and somehow that's the day your pocket catches on a, a knob in your kitchen or yeah. something. <laughs> it's just like going everything's going wrong, but. It, it's really what about the clip of calamity. Connor that I sent to you guys with the zoom in on him sitting on the bench? Did you see that clip? Oh yeah, Boy. yeah. Look, I mean, he's he's com he's the most competitive non Nathan I, McKinnon person. The, the the fear is like it doesn't get necessarily better, and he's got to go play sixty more games. Yeah, well, and he put him in bubble wrap. If you know, if in twenty games they're you know they continue this sort of pace, <laughs> I don't know what you do. Like, um. I don't Art, know what you, do. you just play. You just be a pro. That's what you do. By That's the way, still, still the overwhelming, whelming favorite to win the heart, Gun McDavid, according to Bet Three Six Five. God, where is he in scoring on his own team here? Let's look this up. That's crazy to me. That, that is... he would still be the favorite. Like, I, you know, Pasternak's now creeped up there. He's plus six hundred. Matthews plus seven hundred. Quinn Hughes is up there. Elias Pettersson, Kucherov maybe at fourteen to one. A guy that's having a great start to the year. But the front, the number one and two favorites are Connor McDavid and Jack Hughes still. McDavid's still fifth on his team in scoring. He's uh, he tied with Evander Kane. He's behind Hyman, Bouchard, and Dreisaitl. No. And uh, the last quick one I wanted to bring up, that the Vesna Trophy, the odds have shifted pretty good there. Demko now the favorite. Plus oh, 600. really? Yeah. yeah. Jake Ottinger second. Shesterkin has gone way down. And, and Sorokin has Do you gone have down. the odds? Is Norris odds available? Yes, has got, is Makar have caught? Uh... He is not. Plus 160 for Quinn. Kale McCarr is plus 220. So they, those are the two pretty big favorites. Kale McCarr, oh in boy. his last eight matches, has 18 hockey points. That's He's a defenseman, I will remind you. He had and, a breakaway goal. And the play he made to strip JT Miller. A little just all right, good we, read. Let's pick up on okay. uh, McCarr versus Quinn. Let me just finish this off for you, Kipper. That was Game Time, presented by Bet365. Visit the app for the latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Nice job, Sammy. Okay. Thanks, bud. And uh, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll pick up on that uh, because okay. it was a, a marquee matchup. It was. Good, McCarr good game. versus Quinn last night, Colorado, Vancouver. That plus 
Vasilevsky boys. Oh, boy. Did Tampa Bay <laughs> do what they thought that they could do and tread water? Yeah, they did better than that. Get the Stone Cold music ready and for that. And now <laughs> they get their horse back. <laughs> Can you do a t- turkey? <laughs> More of that after the break. Nick Kiprio, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee. Uh, before break, we were talking about uh, Vancouver and Colorado last night, which I thought was a pretty good game. And yeah. uh, Vancouver looked every bit the part of uh, of a challenging uh, opponent to Colorado going into the third period, and then yeah. Uh, Kind of dried, off a little bit. dried up a little bit on Vancouver. Now, Colorado team has been through a couple of those big games. You know, they yeah. they have a pretty good sense for how to find their way through. All right. Uh, listen, I mean, the hype is warranted on Quinn Hughes. I've just been, like many, incredibly impressed about uh, where he's been able to take his game to another level. Shooting the puck, uh, the he's skating. Leading the league in scoring as of right now. Phenomenal. But it was almost as if Kale McCarr said last night, not so fast. Yeah. I, I honestly, I really hope that's his, his feeling because it's like a, there's a lot of conversation when I've been leading it as, you know, my, my Canucks. Yes. Um, huge Canucks guy. That Quinn Hughes is the Norris guy and he's unbelievable, one of the best guys. But McCarr is still the best. Yeah. You know, McCarr, he's, uh, you know, he, he is actually ahead of him in points per game. He missed a couple of games, but he's been the Norris guy before. I mean, they both play a lot of minutes. There's no doubt, but Makar is still... It just seems to me that Makar is a little bit more forceful. There's just a bit yeah, more he's a power player. to his game yeah. mm-hmm. than Who Quinn. Was it? Someone called him Nate McKinnon, but on defense. Like, he does have that sort of that... Yeah, he's a big, strong... Or not say big, but he's a strong guy, so... Yeah. Uh, maybe that's a separator and, for him. And then, by the way, that's not to take away from Quinn Hughes who is obviously having this unbelievable season, drives play, touches the puck more than anyone in the NHL. It's just, you know, for talk radio's sake, you got to pick one. Uh, if Yeah, if I'm starting yeah. my team tomorrow and I get a pick between the two, go Makar. Yeah, and I'm guessing a lot of people in Vancouver yeah. wouldn't. And, but, yeah, that's fine. And then the goal last night. Uh, you were touching on it a little bit before break, but uh, and it was Miller who he stole the puck from. And probably we saw a few more of those type of giveaways <laughs> Last year, last yes. year yeah. out of Miller than we have this year. But he says no, by the way, Miller. Yes, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm just. Yeah, it's less noticeable because I'm surrounded by better players. That's exactly it's basically point. what he said. Yeah. We're yeah. winning, so people don't clip those as much. I'm anymore. not sure he's wrong. Yeah, he might be right. right? Like yeah. I mean, every mistake isn't magnified. Tough spot to hang one out there, though. I know. I know. It was, it, I mean, give McCarr some credit. It was a good read. Play. Bing one yeah. hand out, yeah. and he's gone. Yeah. So, but we're seeing stuff out of JT Miller this year where, and his goal last night. I mean, what a play. Like, and the guys talked about it in the booth. Just uh, like an all power forward goal inside to go outside and then get to the net and kick the the, the puck up off your skate and go short side. Mm. Like, that was incredibly impressive. It was. Do want the save though, but yes, it is. Uh, it was a hell of a goal. So great, great game last night. All right, we're gonna go to the. Tell uh, me where you want to go. Well, I'll tell you exactly where I want to go. I want to go to the Greg Popovich. Oh, you want to do that now from last night? I, I mean, Kip and I were talking about it a little bit here at break. It, yeah, we need to bring is, it up. This is not. Uh, this is not for me a basketball story, but more of a, a sports story because it's. Where are we as sports people? On? What is going on? If you didn't hear last, last night. night the Clippers are playing the Spurs. Kawhi plays for the Clippers now. He used to play for the Spurs. Forced his way out. Eventually ended up in Toronto and won a championship. Yeah, it was so fun. All right. Yes. Everyone boos Kawhi when he comes back. Yes. Greg Popovich, outspoken guy, uh, very opinionated. Did not like that last night. Literally grabbed the microphone yeah. during a live professional sporting event and told fans to stop booing. We have the clip. You Let's hear play. The, do you want to hear the clip? Yeah. Excuse me for a second. Pops on Can the we mic. We stop all the boo and let these guys play. It's got no class. It's not who we are. Knock off the boo. <laughs> what was the potential like, outcome seriously, of that? W- what's next? Tip your waitress. Like <laughs> honestly, there's no. I guess there's no other professional sport where a microphone a mic. is like 
readily available like that because it's courtside. You NFL can, ref could grab a or coach could grab yeah, a I linesman's. But you're trying to beat the Los Angeles Clippers, and They're your fans you. are booing a man to try to get in his head. But it's it's booing. But it's booing. And booing's been around for a thousand years. It's the you crux boo of, people yeah, you don't a, like on the sports, other team. It's like a core sports thing is booing. That's booing. all we got left. That's it. And we, I, as fans, that's it. You know, we we, we get you know stuck <laughs> up and saying the greatest, the weirdest, the best. Like that's a very big thing that we do, myself included, a lot. But that is truly one of the weirdest things I've ever seen in a sporting event. Like I saw that clip come up on Twitter, and I was like aghast. <laughs> Great word. Well, I was it reminds me of the reverse of like the me? Jeb Bush please clap moment where it's just like you can't will people to feel I, a way or to behave a way. This man is one of the most respected coaches in the history of the NBA. I don't, I don't know, I think they won five and, championships. And I think it's, it's, I, feel, it's I respect Scotty Bowman. I, I, I think mean, that, that, that gave him, you know, the, the, that feeling that I can do this. For sure. Right? Like yeah. I'm, it. it it just Darko is not doing that no. here with the Raptors. Like that's but not. I I actually respect him a little less today. Like it changed my perspective on him. That's how much I hated it. I couldn't believe it. If I'm a sports at the game, I would ah. boo him even more. Well, I would boo it's him. Like, well, first of all, it, <coughs> if I paid 150 dollars for this C200, that guy forced his way out off our team. Don't don't tell me how to act. I mean, am I throwing stuff? Am I using obscene gestures? Am I cursing? I'll Am take I it making... one farther. I think Popovich should have to apologize. Agree. That is not his place to tell I... people how to. Agree. You're preaching. Fan. I keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's you know, and I love Pop. I'm a, I'm a total Pop guy. I think yeah, he's. I it, was. Yeah, last yeah, night. yeah, it really bothered you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it really bothered me. Well, let's I'm see a, if I'm a sports fan. Imagine whoever the coach, like Dwayne Casey, gets on the mic when Vince Carter is here. He's like. Don't boo Vince Carter. That's <laughs> yeah. our guy. Like, or just it's like that's like, not who we are. That's not who we just are. Who are you telling do, me do who it, I am? Do it, Craig McTavish. I'm a scumbag. Don't tell me I'm not. In <laughs> Calgary, go get the mascot and get just the hound beat out the there. crap out of him or yeah. pull his tongue out of his mouth. That's still that in was the, a wild sport. That's, in the, that's still in the upper echelons of great. Just sports give class. That that was awesome. <laughs> hey, so he's you know Harvey the Hound has to be in that spot in the first place, which is a little whatever. Yes. How about my junior hockey team? Quick story. Yes. The other team's mascot is behind our bench in playoffs. Our coach calls timeout, 2-2 two, two in playoffs, whatever. Tight match. Yeah, tight match. Tells our equipment trainer or manager a little something. Timeout. The guy starts banging the drum. Our equipment manager over the top. I mean, full on, climbs over, lawnmower on the mascot, assault charges. Like, we're wow. it's during a timeout, and we're watching... <laughs> Isn't that our equipment guy? Isn't that the equivalent to me like punching my couch? Like, what, what do you mean? Like you're punching the mascot? No, he, had, he got the the mascot oh, he head got off. The mascot. Oh, okay. it was brutal. I thought it was pounding on the mask. No, it was it was a ruthless <laughs> act of violence. Really? That was, that was like yeah. Connor. Remember, so, remember, hold on, coach yeah. has got the whiteboard. He's going eyes here, eyes here. <laughs> our trainer's beating the hell out of a mascot. Yeah, yeah, you got my attention, coach. <laughs> Good junior hockey days. So anyway, that's we'd rather encourage than Greg to go back to the mic then and do that than yes, beat up anybody. Maybe the verbal way is a better way to go about it. That's all right. still crazy. Well, that's uh, like what's his name? Connor uh what's the the fighter that the Irish guy? McGregor? Oh Connor McGregor. McGregor, the super famous guy I couldn't remember. <laughs> yeah. Who did he, he punch? He decked a a mascot. Yeah, oh, I did like see recently. that. Recently, yeah. like he, he like him laid, laid him out, and like the guy, like was bad. Yeah. The guy uh, wasn't moving. I think it was a setup, but it wasn't supposed to. He wasn't supposed to hit him like that. It wasn't supposed to but, end like that. But there's something about like a mascot injury that's just kind of really hilarious. hilarious because it's like they've got this stupid face on, like the video of the Marlin who goes crashing into the boy, and yeah. like he. Breaks his foot and they're trying to like well, drag him off. There's, <laughs> smile on his face. there's a whole Twitter account about like mascots observing moment of silence. Oh, yeah, where it's, it's like you're trying to look solemn and you've got this painted <laughs> dumb face on. Yeah, like the one that got stuck in the ceiling, the shark. Like, okay, you guys I are love... pulling a Mike Fuda. I, I don't know what we're sorry, talking about. Sorry, sorry, I don't know sorry. what we're talking about right now. Sports. I love mascot stuff. Okay. Yeah. I got, right. I got accosted by a mascot when I was a kid. All right. Tell us about Ovechkin and what he nah, said. He said that him and Sid saved the NHL. Saved the NHL. Yeah. Okay. Like, was was it a... Here, I can give you a quote. <laughs> yeah, it was, give from, us the... uh, it was from a article in The Athletic. 
that was written about, I'm just pulling it up here as I go to here. Give me one second. Give me some um, Jeopardy music. Jeopardy music. Thank you very much. Uh, and speaking with Rob Rossi, we saved the league. Now they come in, and I guess we're old news. But we saved it. It's up to those guys to come in and prove me wrong that we're not the best. We saved the NHL. That's what Alex Ovechkin said about him and said. Whoa. Love it. Like, I'm, I'd like to know the context and tone and, like, is... Yeah. I, it's, I don't know about save. The, the league's been around a long time, and it would have just been fine if if he never existed. I, I don't know. I don't want to sound like... But it would have it would have been fine. But it would have found I, I a way to, hit... to move forward. Yeah. But in saying that, there's no question that you, when you came out of that lockout, mm-hmm. that particular lockout, and then you felt like you needed to give the fans a different look, and that's why we went into the the restructure of the the holding ups, the yeah, the hooking, no the touching and gl- yeah. grabbing, the introduction of. Uh, the three on three, or not the three on three, the overtime. Yeah. At four on four, is that the way it started? I, I can't it even did. remember no, now. It, it, when we came out yeah. of the lockout, it started, it started four on four. It and started then, four on four, and then it worked its way down to three on three. Yeah, and I think in twenty fifteen. And they first. leaned heavily on Ovechkin and Crosby. There's no question about that. But the argument isn't: Did Ovi and Crosby help the game? Yeah. Would it have folded without them? That's the question right. I'm asking when you. When you lower the overall <laughs> talent level, whoever the next highest people were, like Malkin would have been Ovi in oh, terms Malkin of celebrity. So good. Yeah. Yes. You know, whatever. But it's not what feels, top 100, though. Uh, but that's quite the thing to say, well, even if it's true. It, it does feel like, if that's the case, if we can just take it for face value as, as how it reads yeah. to us today, I love it, it does sound like he's not very happy. Well, and it also sounds like he thinks he's still as good as jack hughes and the other elite players in the <laughs> nhl like ov now is not one of the 10 best players in the nhl and it sounds like he still thinks he is which of course he thinks he is of, yeah i understand elite athletes have to think that way yeah. but i think uh not. you know I, I i'm really interesting I'm, I'm interested to watch washington move forward here because for the first 20 games they've actually put themselves in a position to make the playoffs Yes, for sure. Now, we talked right? about uh, the hole that the Oilers have dug, but so both Vancouver and Washington. If are Ovi spots. now, let's just say he may have lost a step and he is now in that 25 or 30 goal mm-hmm. window, mm-hmm. it's not exactly a guy that can still play all two minutes of a power play anymore. But he does. I Whether bet. He can or should is not the question. Yeah, that, I bet so he that's. Does. that's Moving forward, if you're a, a rookie coach like uh, Carberry, mm-hmm. do you have to go to Ovi and say, Ovi, I need you to come off after a minute and ten? You're going to come off the bench. You're the sixth <laughs> man now. No. I don't think, yeah, that's a tough combo. But we've got Washington and Edmonton tomorrow night. Yes. So we'll we'll see how that plays out. Boy, All right. we'll need one. We had a ton we'll of guests today, that. Sammy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Busy night in the NHL, Sammy? Yeah, locked and loaded with uh, zero. Zero, Zero, Zero games. games. Leaves 2 p.m. tomorrow, though. All right. Our thanks to Luke Gazdick. Mm-hmm. Our thanks to Mike Fuda and Darren Pang on the Real Kipper and Boring Show. Enjoy the rest of your night, nhl But we're back tomorrow on the Real Kipper and Boring Show.